Militia Immaculate, the Knighthood of the Immaculate Virgin Mary of the Traditional Observance, according to the writings in the spirit of the founder, St. Maximilian Kolbe, by Father Carl Stalin, SSPX, translated into English by Michael J. Miller. The Origin of the M.I. The year 1917 saw not only the October Revolution in Russia, but also, in Fatima, the apparitions of Our Lady. In Rome, Freemasonry was celebrating their 200th anniversary. Everywhere you looked, you could see flags and posters depicting St. Michael the Archangel being conquered and trampled underfoot by Lucifer. Long processions winded their way through the Eternal City toward St. Peter's Square. The marchers sang blasphemous songs and carried banners with slogans such as, Satan will reign in the Vatican, and the Pope will be his servant. At that same time, a young Polish Franciscan happened to be in Rome also, Brother Maximilian Maria Kolbe, a theology student at the Gregorian University. He was compelled to witness these menacing demonstrations. Is it possible, he asked himself, that our enemies should make such a display of force in order to defeat us, while we fold our hands in our laps and do nothing? After all, we not have much more powerful weapons? Could we not count on all of heaven, and especially on the Immaculata? The young religious brother meditated on sacred scripture, the fathers of the church, the teachings of the great Marian saints, for example, those of St. Louis-Marie Grillon de Montfort. He also meditated upon the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, as well as the meeting of the appearances of Our Lady and Lords. Indeed, all of these truths and mysteries not only have sp spiritual significance, but also are extremely practical because of their social relevance. The spotless virgin, vanquisher of all heresies, will not retreat before the enemy who raises his head against her. When she finds faithful servants who obey her commands, she will win new victories greater than we can ever imagine. In 1917, Rome was celebrating another anniversary as well a day of victory for the Immaculata. The instantaneous conversion of Alphonse Radespan, a Jew, in the year 1842, thanks to graces obtained through the miraculous medal. The coincidence gave Brother Maximilian the idea of founding a knighthood of the Immaculata. Its emblem would be the miraculous medal. Three days after the miracle of the sun in Fatima, on October 16, 1917, Brother Maximilian, with permission from his superior, founded, together with six confreres, the Militia Immaculate, while kneeling before Our Lady's altar in the chapel of the Seraphic, Seraphic College in Rome. The Object of the M.I. The Militia Immaculate is not an association in the conventional sense, with definite concrete activities designed for a particular group of interested persons. Quote, it is a movement which should attract the masses and snatch them away from Satan. Once souls have been won over to the Immaculata, there will also be a few who can be led further to the very heights of devotion, even to the point of heroism in the service of spreading the kingdom of God through the Immaculata. All religious orders and congregations, all the movements in the church can also belong to the MI. Membership in the MI will enable each member to give his best to the apostolate, and in this way attain Christian perfection in his state of life, in his vocation. It is necessary to understand the MI as something transcendent rather than general. This means that it should not be viewed as just one organization among many others. Rather, it ought to penetrate into the depths of all other organizations. This was dated from a letter from December 31st, 1935. The essence of the MI consists of belonging to the Immaculata unconditionally, irrevocably, unreservedly, and entirely. That is why anyone who joins the MI becomes entirely her property, and in precisely this way he belongs to Jesus, just as she belongs to Jesus, and the more he is her property, the more he belongs to Jesus. The MI calls itself a militia, a knighthood, because anyone who belongs to her does not limit himself to consecrating himself totally to the Immaculata, but he also strives as much as he can to win the hearts of others for her, so that others, too, may consecrate their hearts to her, just as he has consecrated himself to her. The object of the MI is to strive for the conversion of sinners, heretics, schismatics, etc., and especially of Freemasons, 
as well as for the sanctification of all, under the protection and through the intercession of the Immaculate Virgin. Father Maximilian Kolbe distinguishes three degrees in the MI, depending upon the member's zeal, their capabilities, and their state in life. Number one, in the first degree of the MI, each one consecrates himself to the Immaculata and endeavors to realize the purpose of the militia individually according to his own circumstances and the rules of prudence. This degree is the basis, the foundation of the militia. In his individual personal life, the Knight of the Immaculata prays, sacrifices, and works like a soldier in single combat. Number two. In the second degree of the MI, the Knights bind themselves by special statutes and programs. They unite their forces in order to reach their declared goal more quickly and effectively. This degree is characterized by united effort and the organization of Knights so as to conduct a public apostolate. The Knights can join forces for various projects, whether in a parish, in a local religious community, or at the level of a religious order or congregation. Associations can also be formed by knights who share the same spiritual interests, grouped by age or apostolic aims, etc. Furthermore, already existing organizations, examples through youth movements, study groups, etc., can subscribe to the idea of the MI and thus function as second degree MI groups. Number three, the third degree of the MI consists in an unlimited devotion to the Immaculata. Thus she can do with us what she wills, and as she wills. We belong entirely to her, and she belongs entirely to us. We do everything with her help. We live and work under her protection. This is, so to speak, the summit of the MI, the consecrated state. The knight dedicates himself completely and exclusively to the apostolate of the Immaculata, and seals this consecration by taking religious vows. In this way, the first degree is restricted to individual action, the second degree to the public and social apostolate, whereas the third degree goes beyond all limits and aims at heroism. From a letter dated May 25, 1920. The Historical Development of the Militia Immaculate One year after it was founded, the MI received an apostolic blessing from Pope Benedict XV. On January 2, 1922, it was approved by Pope Pius XI as a pious association, Pia Uno, and in 1927, it was elevated to a Pinu Uno Primaria, which means that the MI is allowed to found branches everywhere. Since then, the MI has spread throughout the world in an unmistakably miraculous way. In 1927, Father Maximilian founded Nipakalanao, the city of the Immaculata. In order to put into practice the ideal of the third degree MI, a little city arose on a tract of farmland. Twelve years after its founding, it numbered 762 religious brothers who zealously dedicated themselves to the Marian apostolate in every possible form, especially the apostolate of the Catholic press. Among the eleven periodicals published there were a daily newspaper, which by the year 1939 had 250,000 subscribers, and especially the monthly magazine, Night of the Immaculata, which had a press run of almost one million for its Polish edition. This magazine was published in various languages, even in Japanese and in Latin as well for the clergy. In 1930, Father Colby founded a second city of the Immaculata in Nagasaki, Japan, which was miraculously spared during the atomic bombing of the city in 1945. In the early 1960s, the MI had 500 affiliates on all five continents and numbered more than 3 million members. The MI after the Council The revolution brought about by the Second Vatican Council did not spare the MI, but introduced radical changes. Number one, the name. They began by changing the all too militant name of militia, knighthood, to the mission of the Immaculata, so as to correspond better to the principles of religious freedom and conciliar pacifism. Soon afterwards, the statutes were adapted to the spirit of the Council. The quotations in the new statutes are taken exclusively from conciliar texts and writing of Pope Paul VI and Pope John Paul II, along with a few quotations from St. Maximilian. Number two, the object. 
These revised statutes present a completely new object of the MI. There is no longer any mention of the conversions of Freemasons, heretics, etc. Even the ejaculatory prayer of the MI, O Mary conceived without sin, etc., was deprived of its final clause, which the founder had added, and for all those who do not have recourse to thee, especially for the Freemasons, and for all those who have been commended to thee. The conversions of souls, the battle against error and efforts to bring fallen away Catholics back into the bosom of the Holy Mother Church, are likewise no longer to be found in the statutes. There is not a word about Satan, the arch enemy of the Immaculata, and of souls, and therefore, logically, no mention either of the salvation of souls, which must be snatched from the jaws of hell at any cost. Number three, the essence. As for the essence of the MI, there is still talk about total consecration to the Immaculata. But what this consecration involves concretely has been radically changed. Not a word about obedience to the will of the Immaculata. Instead of the apostolate of spreading the truth faith, the focus now is on activities designed to promote the dignity of human person and to protect human life. Number four, the Mother of God is presented merely in his, as an example and a model to be imitated. On the other hand, the new statutes are silent about what St. Maximilian calls, quote, the practical application of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, namely, her active role as mediatrix of all graces, a truth which since Vatican II has been reduced to a debatable opinion, especially of the graces of conversion and sanctification. In this manner, what the founder regarded as the foundation of an entire project is being denied. Quote, all of the work of the MI is based on the truth that Mary is the mediatrix of all graces. If this were not the case, then our work and our efforts would be meaningless. This is from a conference he said on June 6, 1933. The Revival of the MI in Traditional Catholicism the MI was revived in the spirit of, and according to the text of its original statutes on May 6, 2000 by the superior of the Priestly Society of St. Pius X in Poland, with the permission of his general superior, Bishop Bernard Fillet, in keeping with the principles of the supplementary jurisdiction. In France, the spread of the MI was entrusted to the traditional Capuchin friars of Morgan. In February 2002, the general superior wrote in a letter to the members of the Priestly Society, Quote, by all means, I invite you to undertake this wonderful, thoroughly apostolic initiative and to propagate it. We see that as a perfect agreement with the Fatima message on the one hand, and on the other hand with that pious devotion toward the most blessed Virgin Mary that our statutes demand of us. End quote. In November 2016, the Militia Maculate Traditional Observance counts 15,000 knights. We encourage you to use the website, which is in many languages, including English, German, French, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Polish, www.militia-immaculate.info. If anyone in the English-speaking world would like to join the MI, he can ask any priest of the Society of St. Pius X to perform the ceremony of enrollment. One officially becomes a, quote, Knight of the Immaculata, However, after the priest signs a certificate of membership and is filed in the register at the MI headquarters, you can write to the headquarters of the traditional MI at the following address, info at militia-immaculate.asia. We recommend books about Maximilian Kolbe's spirituality. The Immaculata Our Ideal. This book by Father Carl Stalin is partly biographical, but primarily focuses on St. Maximilian Kolbe's life, a long apostolate of spreading devotion to our Immaculate Lady following the method of St. Louis de Montfort. Father debunks the typical myths of this so-called, quote, saint of ecumenism, end quote, and shows his concern with combating heresy, liberalism, modernism, Freemasonry, and the need to convert heretics and Jews. Consecration to the Immaculata this book is a preparation for enrollment to the Militia Immaculate, with an introduction and 13-day preparation according to St. Maximilian Kolbe. Father Director of the MI Traditional Observance explains the consecration according to St. Louis Marie Grignon de Montfort and also that according to St. Maximilian Maria Kolbe. Who are you, O Immaculata? 
the first time that God communicates his own name to us in Holy Scripture, he says, I am who am. When Our Lady spoke to little Saint Bernadette at Lourdes, she told her, I am the Immaculate Conception. Oh, the depths of mystery and of beauty that lies in those twin utterances. The full role of the Immaculata is explored and refined, and its relevance to the world in our time is detailed and easy to read and understood format. She leadeth me. Learn true Marian devotion from one of the greatest Marian saints of all time. If you are looking for a source of meditation on Mary and a book that will help you to become closer to her Immaculate Heart, then this is it. St. Maximilian Kolbe, in this short collection, shows that there is no other way to please God but through this total devotion to Mary. Orders can be made at www.kolbepublications.com The Original Statutes of the M.I. She Will Crush Your Head Genesis 3.15 Thou alone has vanquished all heresies throughout the world from the Roman Breviary. 1. The Object To work for the conversion to God of all men, be they sinners, heretics, schismatics, Jews, etc., in particular the Freemasons, and that all become saints under the patronage and through the mediation of the Immaculate Virgin. 2. Conditions 1. To consecrate oneself entirely to the Immaculate Virgin, placing oneself freely as a docile and generous instrument in her hands. 2. To wear the miraculous medal. Part 3. The Means Number 1. If possible, to pray the following ejaculation at least once a day. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee, and for all those who do not have recourse to thee, especially for the Freemasons, and for all those who are commended to thee. Number 2. To use all other valid and legitimate means for the conversion and sanctification of men, according to one's means and the different states and conditions of life, as the occasions present themselves. This is entrusted to the zeal and prudence of each one. Particularly, however, recommended is spreading the miraculous medal. NB. These means are recommended only as suggestions and not as an obligation. Not one of them obliges under pain of sin, not even venial sin. Our principal motive is to help the greatest possible number of souls to be united with the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the mediation of the Immaculata. Explanatory Notes about the M.I. by St. Maximilian Kolbe Why should we turn to the Immaculata in particular? As for the conversion of sinners, we can accomplish this in no other way than through Mary. In his infinite goodness, God appointed his Most Holy Mother as a treasure of all graces, and they are poured out upon the world only through her. Of course, we must ask God himself for these graces, but always through the intercession of the Immaculata, from a conference from May 30th, 1933. What is entailed in total consecration to her? We wish to belong so completely to the Immaculata that nothing belonging to us remains, so that we are, so to speak, annihilated in her, as though transformed into her, so that she alone remains in us, so that we belong to her just as she belongs to God. From a letter written April 12, 1933. Is the act of total consecration sufficient? Love for the Immaculata does not consist solely in the act of consecration, even when it is carried out with great zeal, but also in taking on many privations and constantly working for her cause. From a letter written on February 10, 1937. Is this consecration really irrevocable? In the MI, we must distinguish two things very carefully, its essence and its additional features. The essential thing is not this or that form of organization, but rather the unconditional and unrestricted consecration of oneself to the Immaculata, love for the Immaculata, which shines forth to such a degree that the souls around us are enkindled by this fire. From a letter written December 13, 1938. What effect? does this consecration have on our actions and our work. This consecration by no means requires that we leave the world and family behind and enter a cloister. No, one can continue to devote himself to all his previous respectable activities 
in his previous state of life. Now, however, we ourselves do not offer up these daily activities, but rather the Immaculata, whose property we have become, offers them up herself, and she offers them up, not as our feeble works, which are fraught with all sorts of imperfections, but rather as her own, for we belong to her with everything that is ours. Therefore, all of our activities belong to her as well. The spotless virgin, however, cannot offer up to God anything that is spotted or stained. In her immaculate hands, our imperfect works are also become immaculate, pure, and hence incomparably more valuable. From a first circular letter in German, June 10th, 1938. Do our works belong to the Immaculata only when we think about it, her, as we are performing them? The essence of devotion to the Immaculata does not consist of thinking about her constantly, but rather willingly. Thus, the soul that is completely occupied in performing its duties does not cease being the property of the Immaculata, and its thoughts, words, and deeds do not cease belonging to the Immaculata, even when the person himself is not thinking about it. From a first circular letter in German, June 10, 1938. Why should we wear the miraculous medal and propagate it? In this work that the MI sets before us, we must use every possible legitimate means. In particular, however, we must select those means which the Immaculata herself gives to us, and one of these is the miraculous medal. Night of the Immaculata, 1937. Let us distribute the miraculous medal everywhere that we can, possibly can, to good people and to the wicked as well, to Catholics and to unbelievers. For if someone gives her even the least bit of honor, she will not give up on him, but will bring him to the faith and to repentance. Therefore we must propagate her medal, and at the same time fervently implore her to obtain our conversion and that of others. From the Night of the Immaculata, December 1927. Are there other methods of carrying on the apostolate? We must not only defend the faith and collaborate in the salvation of souls, but we must also courageously and unselfishly go on the offensive and win souls for the Immaculata, one after the other, and push on from one outpost to the next, through publishing houses, daily newspapers, periodicals, books, press agencies, radio stations, artistic and literary institutes, theater, film, legislative bodies. In short, we must present souls to the Immaculata everywhere, as far as the earth extends, and with all imaginable honorable means that we have at our disposal. From a letter written on December 21st, 1928. What is the spiritual character of the MI? The militia of the Immaculata exists not only as a defensive force, but especially as an offensive. For us, it is not enough just to defend religion. With all our might and trusting in our queen, we advance even into the enemy camp in order to hunt down souls and to win them for the Immaculata. Every heart that is beating somewhere on the world and every one that shall be beat until the end of the world must be captured for the Immaculata. That is our goal. We want to accomplish this as quickly as possible. From a letter written April 23, 1929. The night is haunted by the very thought that so many souls have not even heard the name of Mary. He would like to win the whole world for her, to bring her to every beating heart under the sun, and to every heart that shall ever beat, so that she may enlighten these hearts with abundant graces, and warm them with the love of her maternal heart, and enkindle in them, and fan the flames of love for God, for the sacred heart of Jesus. From a first circular letter in German, June 10, 1938. Is the MI, then, a real militia, an army equipped for battle? Faced with such powerful deeds per perpetrated by the enemies of God, we are allowed to stand about idle? Is it permissible merely to complain and shed tears? No. Consider that at the last judgment we will not only give an accounting of what we have done, but God will also count up all these good deeds that we have, could have done but failed to do from Night of the Immaculata, 1923. And so we must suffer, work, and die as knights, but not an ordinary death. Why not by a bullet in the brain in order to seal our love for the Immaculata? 
Why not shed our last drop of blood as true knights in order to hasten the conquest of the whole world for her? Knight of the Immaculata, 1939. Who and what are the greatest enemies in this battle? All over the globe, a battle is being waged against the church and the salvation of souls. The enemy manifests himself in various guises and under different names. It is no secret that socialism exploits the misery of the workers so as to inject them with the poison of unbelief. We see how the Bolsheviks trample on religion. We hear the teachings of materialists who narrow down the universe to what is immediately perceptible to the senses, and so they persuade each other that neither God nor the immortal soul exists. Theosophy spreads religious indifference, and the Jehovah's Witnesses and other Protestants use fat wads of dollar bills to recruit more and more adherents. All these camps join to form a front line against the church. From the Night of the Immaculata, 1923. But the enemy's most important troops are to be found behind these front lines. The preeminent, mightiest, and deadliest enemy of the church is Freemasonry. From the manuscript, The Enemies of the Church Today. How does the MI view ecumenism? Thou alone has vanquished all heresies throughout the world. How are we to understand that? She destroys heresies, not heretics, for she loves the latter and desires their conversion. Precisely because she loves them, she frees them from heresy and destroys their false opinions and convictions. She vanquishes heresies, that is to say, she does not only lessen or weaken them, but completely and utterly destroys them, so that no trace of them remain. All? All of them without exception. Where? Through all the earth, not just in this country or that, therefore, but in all the countries in the world. She alone, nothing more is needed, therefore, since she is capable of accomplishing this alone. From Night, 1933. Why the Ejaculatory Prayers? We are among those souls that are destined to keep their hands uplifted in prayer. The future depends to a large extent on these souls. Besides our daily prayers in common, we say many additional ejaculatory prayers. The slightest prayer and the most in insignificant deed have their effect. God wills that we rule the world through prayer. From a conference on March 10, 1940. Are there also gatherings and meetings in the MI? A second degree MI group can be formed in any place and its significance will not depend so much on the number of members as on their zeal. These groups, which vary according to social differences, conditions, and circumstances in which the members live and work, look together for ways of reaching their great goal. They examine the results and improve their work methods as they gain more experience. From a letter from December 2, 1931. Is such an organization necessary for the apostolate? External activity is good, but it goes without saying, does a secondary, and even less than secondary in comparison with the interior life, the life of recollection and prayer, the life of personal love for God, to the extent that we ourselves burn more and more with divine love, we will be able to kindle the hearts of others with this love. From a letter written September 10, 1940. Doesn't the Mother of God ask us to do penance as well? In supernatural matters, the means at our disposal are prayer and suffering. If we have worked with much without sacrificing ourselves, then all that effort has no value. We must accept from the hands of the Immaculata everything that she sees fit to send to us, when in the matter that she wills it, whether it be pleasant or unpleasant, Crosses are necessary, for the Immaculata too experiences crosses here on earth, and Jesus himself chose no other way. From a letter written December 28, 1934. How can this ideal be summed up? Isn't it beautiful, this ideal in life? The battle to conquer the whole world, the hearts of all men, and of each one in particular, beginning with oneself. Our strength consists of recognizing our own stupidity weakness, and misery, 
and entrusting ourselves entirely to the goodness and powers of the Immaculata. In a letter written December 11, 1930. Under the banner of the Immaculata, we march to the great battle, and we will set up our flags on the bastions of the princes of this world. Then the Immaculata will be the queen of the whole world and of every individual person. From a letter written May 30, 1931. The Immaculata is our ideal, to draw near to her, to become like her, to allow her to rule over our heart and soul forever, so she might live and work through men, so that she might love God with our hearts, to belong to her unreservedly, that is our ideal, to shine forth into our surroundings, to win souls for her, so that our neighbors will open their hearts to her so that she might rule in all hearts, beating everywhere in the world, without distinction as to race, nationality, or language, and that she might be in all hearts, which would ever exist until the end of the world. That is our ideal. And that her life might extend and grow in every soul that exists now or shall be. That is our precious ideal. St. Maximilian Colby Father Maximilian Kolbe, OFM, was born on January 7, 1894, in Zdunska Wola, near Lodz, Poland. His simple, pious parents had him baptized with the name Raymond. When he was ten years old, the Mother of God appeared to him. She showed him two crowns, one white and the other red, and said, Which crown do you want? The white one stands for the martyrdom of purity, and the red one, the martyrdom of blood. Raymond answered, I choose both. In 1907, he entered the minor seminary of Franciscans in Limburg. In 1911, he professed temporary vows. In 1912, he was sent to Rome to study. There, on the Feast of All Saints in the year 1940, he made perpetual vows, and on April 28, 1918, he was ordained a priest. Father Maximilian returned to Poland in 1919 with doctorates in philosophy and theology, but seriously ill with tuberculosis. The doctors gave him very little time to live. During his long stay in a sanatorium, several freethinkers were converted through his lectures and conversations. After he had recuperated somewhat, he dedicated himself enthusiastically to spreading the militia maculate which he had founded while still a student in Rome. In 1922, he published the first issue of the publication with the title, Night of the Immaculata. The expenses were covered by funds that had been collected by begging. From 1922 to 1927, he was stationed with his little printing press in the convent in Grodno. Because of the throngs of vocations and the expansion of his press apostolate, he left Grodno and in 1927 founded Nipakalanau, the city of the Immaculata, of which he would be appointed superior until 1930. From 1930 to 1936, he served as a missionary in Nagasaki, Japan, teaching as a professor of philosophy in the major seminary. There he also founded a second city of the Immaculata, Mugenzai no Sono which developed into one of the great missionary centers in Japan. From 1936 until his death, he was again guardian in Nipakalanau, Poland, which, under his direction, developed into one of the greatest strongholds of spiritual life and the apostolate. In 1922, his press apostolate had begun with two religious brothers printing and distributing 5,000 copies of a little newsletter. By 1939, on the eve of the Second World War, the religious community consisted of 762 friars who staffed a gigantic publishing house that produced a daily newspaper, a monthly magazine, a calendar, books, etc., printed in various languages. The city of the Immaculata was sorely afflicted by the war. Many brothers perished, some of them in the consecration camps. On February 17, 1941, Father Maximilian was arrested. During an inspection by SS troops, he was brutally beaten. When he regained consciousness, he consoled his companions in suffering by saying, My friends, you must rejoice with me. This is for souls, for the Immaculata. On May 28th, 
he was brought to the consecration camp in Auschwitz. There he asked the commandant whether he might replace the father of a family who had been condemned to death. He survived for eleven days in a starvation bunker and prepared the other condemned men to enter eternity. On August 14th, the vigil of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he was killed by a lethal injection. He was beatified in 1971 and declared a saint in 1984. Indulgences Granted to the MI According to the brief of Pope Pius XI, dated December 18, 1926, the members of the MI can obtain a plenary indulgence on the following days. The day of their enrollment in the MI, the anniversary of the founding of the MI, October 16th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, the Feast of the Annunciation, March 25th, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, February 11th, the anniversary of the first appearance of Our Lady in Fatima, May 13th, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, October 4th, and the Feast of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, November 27th. Besides the usual conditions for receiving a plenary indulgence, sacramental confession with eight days, reception of Holy Communion, prayer for the intentions of the popes, freedom from attachment to any sin, one must renew his promise to adhere to the statutes of the MI and to keep them faithfully. Ceremony of Reception to the MI Reception preferably takes place on a Marian feast. Part 1. Opening Hymn One of the Holy Ghost hymns, Veni Creator Spiritu, Veni Sancti Spiritu, or Come Holy Ghost, etc. 2. One of the hymns to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Ave Stelle Marie, or others. Part 2. Elocution by the Priest. At this point, the priest can give a short elocution in which he explains the consecration to the Immaculata, praises the resolution to make it, encourages the application applicants to live it. Part 3. Renewal of the Baptismal Promises priest on the day of our baptism we renounce satan his works and the world we promise to serve god faithfully in his holy catholic church let us renew these sacred baptismal vows and so i ask you do you renounce satan we do and all his works we do and all his pomps we do do you believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth we do believe do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, and was buried? We do believe. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? We do believe. Let us therefore pray to God, the Father, in the words that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Part 4. Blessing and Imposition in the Miraculous Medal from the Ritual Romanum. Adjutorium nostrum in nomine demoni, Dominus fubiscum, et cum spiritu tuo. Oremus, omnipotens et misericordes Deus, qui mer per multiplices immaculate Maria Virginis, apparitionis en teris mirabile, hugiter pro animarum, salute apparari dignitatus es, super hoc numismati signum, tuam bened Dicionum venidus infunde, ut pie hoc relocentes ac devote visantes et ilius patronicinum sentient et tuam misericordiam consequenter per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. The priest sprinkles the medals with holy water and places them individually upon each person, requesting enrollment, praying as follows. Abcipse. Sanctum numisma, justifideliter, et digna veneration, prosequer, ut p. 
fisicisma et maculara celorum domina te protecat atre atque defendat epiatate sue prodigia renovans que a deo suppliciter post delaveris tibi misericordiae impetrit ut vivens et moriens en materno eius amplexu feliciter requiescas amen after all are invested the priest prays kyrie eleison christe eleison kyrie eleison pater noster qui es in celis sanctificetur nomen tuum adveniat regnum tuum fiat voluntas tua sicut in celo et in terra panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie et dimite nobis debita nostra sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris et nenius inducas in tentationum, sed libera nos a malo. Regina sine labe originale concepta, ora pro nobis. Domine exaudie rationem meam, eclamor meas ate veniat, Dominus fobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, oremus. Domine Iesu Christe, qui beatissimam virginam Mariam matram, Tuam ab origine immaculatum in nubris miraculis crescere voluisti, concede ut eusdum patrocinium semper implorantes gaudia consequamur aterna, qui vivis et regnus cum Deo Patre in unitate Spiritus Sancte Deus per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Part 5 act of consecration to the Immaculata. O Immaculata, Queen of heaven and earth, refuge of sinners and our mother who loves us so much and to whom God has entrusted the entire kingdom of mercy, I, your name, an unworthy sinner, cast myself down at your feet and implore you with all my heart, deign to accept me utterly and entirely as your possession and your property. Do what you will with me, with all the faculties of my soul and my body, with my whole life, with my death and my eternity. Dispose of me as it pleases thee, so as to fulfill what is said of thee. She will crush the head of the serpent, and also thou alone has vanquished all heresies throughout the world. Make me an instrument in your immaculate and merciful hands to serve thee, so as to increase as much as possible thy honor and so many tepid souls that have fallen away from the faith and thus to extend the kingdom of the sacred heart of Jesus. For upon whatever place you enter, you implore the grace of conversion and sanctification. For all graces come to us from the sacred heart of Jesus, only through thy hands. Grant to me to praise thee, O most blessed Virgin. Give me strength against thine enemies. Part 6. Ejaculation Prayer of the M.I. O Mary, conceived without sin, Pray for us who have recourse to thee, and for all those who do not have recourse to thee, especially for the Freemasons, and for all those who are commended to thy care. Part 7 will be a blessing by the priest and the final hymn to Our Lady. Part 8 is a signing of the Certificate of Enrollment and the MI. St. Maximilian Kolbe's Praise of Mary Grant to me that I may praise you, most blessed Virgin. Grant that I may praise you with all my strength. Grant that I may live and work and suffer for you and for you alone, that I may be consumed and die for you. Grant that I may contribute to your greater and more extensive glorification. Grant that I may pay you such homage as no one has yet paid you. Grant that others may surpass me in their zeal for their glorification, that I may then, as though in a noble competition, propagate devotion to you ever more deeply and swiftly, and magnificently, as desired by him who exalted you so ineffably above all creatures. Amen. Prayer for the Feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe on August 14th. O God, thou hast filled thy heart of thy servant St. Maximilian Maria, with zeal for the salvation of souls, with love of neighbor, with fervent devotion to the Immaculata. Grant us, through his intercession, the grace to work for the honor of God and the salvation of our souls, and to be conformed increasingly until death to thy Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost from eternity to eternity. Amen.